design for single people and there's a design for married people. My last point of single people deals with both. Single people, you got to understand this, that sex was designed to come at last. It's got to be at last. I wouldn't make that a point if so many people weren't trying to put it at first. You meet somebody, they look good. They look at you, they think you look good. You got a place and you got a time. And so, you know what? Let's do this. I mean, after all, before you buy a car, you got to do a test drive. This is the logic. So we're going to kick the tires on this thing to make sure this thing works. This is enjoyable. And trust me, it's enjoyable. You don't have to test the logic on that. It'll work. Okay? That. He created Adam. Catch this. And then he made Adam wait. And then brought sex. What if a part of the design of sex is waiting? Wait for it. So God in your favor wants you to wait for three things. The first thing he wants you to wait, this is why God wants you to wait. Are you ready? Because he wants you to have the best sex. Yeah, yeah. Not mediocre sex, not average sex, not just good sex. God wants you to have the best sex and the best sex is, happens after waiting. My wife, yeah. Not mediocre sex, not average sex, not just good sex. God wants you to have the best sex and the best sex is happens after waiting. Together in our church, it was a great time. Um, we fasted uh, food, some types of food. We fasted uh, TV, we fasted social media. And a lot of people don't know this, but we also fasted sex for 21 days. And I need to confess something to you today. We did not make it. It's 21 day, somewhere around day 17. We felt the peace of the Lord. We felt, we felt the Holy Ghost just go, and then we're like, I mean, God, if you say so, we'll step into your will, your perfect will. I was like, you feel good? I feel good. I feel like we did what we came here to do with the Lord. I feel like we knocked us down. And I'm not trying to get too vulgar. I just want to tell you, that night was a good night. It's going to be great. I'm not going to have any struggles anymore. Can I tell you something about marriage? Every struggle that you don't solve in your singleness, you bring into your marriage and it's amplified. It's even worse. How does that even work? Because when you're not married, Hopefully, you're not having sex. When you're not having sex, it's just, it's just off. It's just kind of, you're not using it often. You're not engaging in it often. So your, your muscle memories, your mental memories, your, it's just not being exercised regularly. So it's not that you don't have desires, but you're not practicing it regularly. So in a way, it kind of is a little bit dormant. But when you start getting married and you start having sex, you're feeding those desires. And whatever desires you have when you're single, here's what I'm trying to tell you, ladies. If he can't keep his hands off you now, when y'all get married, how, what makes you think he's going to be able to keep his hands off his coworker? If you're struggling with pornography now, don't for a moment think that when you get married, now that you're married, you won't wrestle with pornography because she don't look like the girl on the screen. <laughs>